Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they shouted, crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no crime deserving death. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that their demand should be granted. He released the man that had been thrown into prison from insurrection and murder, whom they asked for, but Jesus he delivered up to their will. Lord Jesus, despite the uproar, we glimpse you among the crowds shouting for you to be crucified. Perhaps we too were among them, blind to the evil of which they were capable. From ourselves, we want to pray to your Father for all those who, like you, are condemned to death and for all those who would substitute their own for your supreme judgment. Let us pray. O oh God, lover of life and the sacrament of reconciliation, you always give us a new opportunity to experience your infinite mercy. We ask you to grant us the gift of wisdom so that we can see every man and woman as a temple of your spirit and respect their inviolable dignity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. What you're about to experience is the journey that Jesus Christ made toward the cross. Every hour, on the hour for 14 hours straight leading up to Easter Sunday, you'll experience everything that he did. You'll witness that, the pain that he endured, the purpose, the reason why he did it all, and then also the passion that led him to facing the ultimate sacrifice and making that sacrifice as well. So here we are at station one, Jesus being condemned to death. Here we have the king of the universe, the one who has created all things now being judged by the very people he created. Jesus standing before Pilate, being condemned, being challenged. And even Pilate, this man, as imperfect as he is, he knows something is wrong with this picture. He knows Jesus is probably innocent of this, but because of the pressure, because of the crowd, he presses forward. And he even turns to the crowd and he says, what shall I do with this man? And they say, crucify him. And he says, why, what has he done? And even louder they shall, crucify him, crucify him. And you can even put yourself in the shoes of the people in the crowd, maybe individuals who did not even think Jesus was guilty either, but as each person yelled, crucify him, they just rang out together and everyone's chanting, crucify him, crucify him. And we have the man who did not deserve it, all of a sudden being condemned to death. Well, you think about that and also think about those words, crucify him, and put yourself in that same scene. And now we're asking you, have you ever been falsely accused? And remember the emotions that come with that as well. Also think about Jesus Christ, who was perfect, sinless, could not sin. He was the son of God, but yet people were yelling, crucify him. So you have the crowds, you have Christ, and you have chaos. Now begins the journey to the cross.